cracking, Ma. Hope everyone's doing well. So today's Thursday, and I wanted to talk to you about what I had mentioned kind of at the close on Tuesday's episode, and that was focusing on one thing. You know, like you, I'm bombarded with all the bullshit in the marketing, right? And if you listen to all of it, you'll be like, man, I'm so inadequate. I need these 85 things to figure out what the hell is going on. And the reality is, is you don't. You don't need AI. You don't need software that helps you track shit. You don't need all that stuff. It's a crutch. Because think about it. At the end of the day, traders trade. You can get a notebook and write it out by hand. You don't need 14 monitors either. You have to focus on one thing and learn how to execute that one thing. If you can do that and keep it simple, there, are, there is a, a, an, an innumerable amount of wealth that's out there that could come your way. But you need to have extreme focus. You can't be distracted or detracted from what your main goal in life is. And I can tell you from all the emails I get, from folks behind the scene who prefer to stay nameless, which I honor, right? You've, I never out anybody. That doesn't help you. No sense in, in shaming people or calling people out. Like, what do you think? I got all the answers? All I have is my own experience. That just still 35 years of subjective experience. It's not necessarily universal. Although I know what we've been doing here to four. I think we started in February doing the video side of this the message seems to be resonating with people. If you can learn to focus, think of yourself as a mental sous chef. You have a great piece of prime-aged beef. Now you've got to trim that thing down and get it ready to be cooked. That's what you want to focus on. What is that one piece of meat for you? You don't want to let outside distractions take away from what it is that you know how to do. That might be one of the biggest uh, characteristics or inputs to my own success over the years is that I had consistent behavior and I was absolutely focused. I knew how to do one thing and I stuck to my knitting. Everyone gets excited when there's a new, you know, new thing. Back, you know, back in the day when I started, it was almost like the nifty 50. They were listed stocks and that you didn't trade NASDAQ because those stocks were really risky. Why did that come about? Well, because they didn't have the same listing requirements, right? There are certain listing requirements that you need to get listed on the New York Stock Exchange, right? Listing, when you say something's listed, it's kind of slang for New York Stock Exchange. If you're listed on NASDAQ, the rules were, they weren't, it wasn't like they were lax, they were just different. They weren't as stringent. So the idea that you would trade everything on the NASDAQ at the time was considered risky. Now it's like de rigueur. It's almost flopped, right, the other way. People are like, well, why would you trade something that's kind of stayed, for example, that's on the New York Stock Exchange where all the action is on some of these NASDAQ listing things, especially if you look at the eight or nine names that have been leading the NASDAQ composite of the first half of the year, right? It was just the opposite when I started. So even venturing into something that had four or five letters in the ticker symbol, you're going to be, dude, you got to be careful. Know what you're doing. You know what I mean? And I had old timers looking at me saying like that, you know, well, it's your money. You know, <laughs> so it was kind of funny to hear. I'm like, wow, what do you think about the Octis natural gas spread here? So then it changes. So then you have the technology names and you had the advent of the clone computer, the PC clone that wasn't IBM. And then it was going to be Windows and Intel Wintel, as they called it, that was going to take you through the 90s. Then in the mid-90s, the internet came about. That was the new shiny thing. And that lasted for about five years before it ended tragically, March 10th of 2000. And you had an 80 90% pullback in the index and companies and mutual funds that got completely blasted, right? Vertical Net, Siebel Systems, JDS Uniphase, uh, CMGI, right? Um, the other one, Internet Capital Group. You had the Mundernet Net Fund, which now has used the same ticker but merged into another fund so they can hide the fact that they had a 99% drawdown. I'll give you the ticker. It's MNNAX. 
So you really can't trust anyone in anything now, because even though what they've done, Munder, is not necessarily illegal, it totally obfuscates the fact that they blew up as a fund, mutual fund. We learned about style drift. We learned about global crossing, right? So that was fun. So then we come into the 2000s, and it's a whole new ball of wax, right? Then you're dealing with um, cryptocurrencies. And so there's all kinds of bubbles and things that kind of come and go. But ultimately, as far as what the vehicles are, the vehicles don't necessarily matter. What matters is how you behave on those vehicles. Can you surf? Can you catch the wave? Can you manage the risk? So that becomes super important because I promise you now everyone's in love with AI. What comes after AI, right? Because that too is going to have its moment in time where everyone wants to get involved. Something's trading at like a thousand times, you know, the next, you know, five, you know, here we are in what, 2023. So the thing is trading, you know, a thousand times 2025's expected earnings, right? So no one can really figure out what the thing is worth. Analysts aren't worth a whole lot here because they don't get paid to take chances. They have to kind of be within, you know, their, their target bullseye because they don't, it's no, for them, they risk their job, basically, right? And, you know, what you want to make sure as a trader, I guess, keeping it to trading is don't worry, valuations don't matter for the most part. Valuation is an investor consideration. It's not a trader consideration. Um, Two, I know enough about my history to know that, for the love of God, if you were afraid of high PE multiples, there were so many names that you never had access to, and you missed some gigantic moves, like thousands of percentage points, like basic stuff like Microsoft. I, I, I'm going to venture, I don't know the exact number, I guess I could look it up, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty damn sure that there weren't too many times when the thing wasn't trading, again, in its heyday, less than 40 times earnings. So you're coming out of a time when people were trading listed securities. Anything on NASDAQ was like, whoa, we're not talking about rampant speculation here, buddy. I'm talking about blue chips, okay? It's how you make money, blue chips. And so there's times when you have to be sensible and, and understand where people are coming from. Like when, if you listen to the incessant rants of, of Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, they're coming at the market from a different day and age. Don't believe me? What's the biggest position in Berkshire? So things change. What doesn't change, though, and what shouldn't change is your behavior. I see too much stuff about you need to have an opening gap strategy. You have to have the lunchtime food coma strategy. You have to have the closing thing. You have to have your speculative earnings jump. And to me, it's like it's too much. You don't need any of that. You need to know how to do one thing and focus on that one thing. Find a strategy that resonates with you, that's compatible with who you are as a person, and then over time, those two things are going to converge. You're going to learn a lot more, and your, and your temperament and your emotional constitution, your trader psychology, that will all merge and get closer and closer and closer. Then you'll be in whatever they call it, the trading zone or this and that, and you'll probably excel. You can certainly experiment because that's how you learn. You have to experiment with real money. Yeah, you can back test and simulate, but you're really going to learn the most about yourself in the new trading style like I did with options after I had already kind of mastered commodity futures, you know, by risking real money. That's part of the calibration process that you can't get on paper. And I see like, People lack focus and it stunts your growth. If you're trying to do too much too soon, it's because you feel probably insecure that you have to get to be like I made a few joke a few weeks ago, like being a complete trader. You don't need all that stuff. You don't need the earnings fade. You don't need all that stuff. You need to pick one strategy that you know you can replicate all the time, not just in earnings season, right? And I'm a commodity guy first, so I know all about seasonality, right? And so if you're finding like you're not making the progress, look at your behavior, how you're breaking up your day. If you time block every day, Monday through Friday, to go back and look at it, where are you spending your time? I bet I could find you 10 hours by helping you just cut out the crap. 
right? So these are the kind of conversations that I have one on one, right, with with the with the hedge fund folks behind the scenes. Is that after a while they start making money, all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, man, I am the Johnny Holmes of my training desk." Don't know who Johnny Holmes is? Look him up. You'll be in for a big surprise. Um, and at the end of the day, they lose focus. Why? Well, because they're already worth thirty million. What's your motivation at that point? Right? I could just try stuff. Doesn't matter if I lose a million. It's three percent of my money. Still got ninety-seven percent. So you have to help them figure, you know, what's important to them. Tie their goals up to you know emotional things that are in their life that are important to them. Help them bring them back to center, and then help them execute and be consistent. So you don't want to become fat and lazy and lose your focus because that's when performance goes out the window. So I can't stress that enough. It's probably one of the most um, prevalent things that I see with the fat cats is that they, they lose focus and they wander off the kibbutz, if you know what I'm saying. And they got to come back to center, focus on one thing, find a new motivation and set new goals for themselves. Because when you get to that point in time, unless you're collecting houses around the world or fancy jets, which, are, you know, again, that doesn't really satisfy me emotionally to collect these types of things, plus a million, minus a million, the quality of your life doesn't change all that much beyond a certain point, right? Now it's just points in the video game of it all. And uh, yeah, of course, you want to be captain of industry, maybe you want to buy and sell companies, all this and that. But again, that's great. But the quality of your life isn't going to change too much. Once you have 20 million, you could have a $5 million home, you could have a $5 million company, the rest is cash, you could take a bunch of time off and still live a really great life, just living on passive income. So, you know, if that's what happens with the more established folks, you can steal from them now, even when you're just starting out and say, hey, if I'm going to make this a career, even if I don't go pro, I want pro-like results, I got to do what Mike says, and I got to stay focused. I got to get one thing that I'm good at and nail it and own it and just become that is who I am. That is who I am as a trader. That's what I do. I execute this one particular strategy. I look for it, and strategy can mean a few things. It could be a chart pattern. It could be whatever it is, but it's that one thing that you know you can nail. That's your go-to number. That's your aria if you're an opera singer that you're going to completely smash. So much so that if you can't find it for that particular day, there's no real reason to trade because that's where your edge is. And if you don't have an edge, you can put on trades, but at that point, it won't be for money. It's probably going to be more for the emotional side of things, right? By you know thinking that you're a, a he-man. Um, in my experience, it's mostly guys who kind of do that kind of stuff more than the women that I consult to. So... Yes, you need a good attitude, you have to be disciplined, you have to have persistence and determination, but you also have to have focus. And heretofore, we haven't spoken enough about the focus part, but you absolutely need the focus to, you know, stay on, stay, stay true, right? To stay true on your path is you have to have focus and focus on that one thing and then just execute it as best that you can. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. I appreciate you all being here. Please like and subscribe. And if you know someone who's struggling, they might find some benefit here. Send them the link. We're on, you know, Spotify and we're still on all the audio channels as well as, you know, here on YouTube if you're watching it here. And, uh, you know, turn them on to the show. Thanks for being here, folks. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, everybody. Thanks for being here. Please take a minute, like and subscribe to the show. You could also leave a comment. I don't have all the answers, so it's good to get some feedback. Also, if you would like to support the show, check out the links below. You can get the free audio book of The Inner Voice of Trading. Uh, and also information about the course that I teach with Victor Sperandio. Thanks for being here, folks. I'll see you tomorrow.